Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Cooler Master recently did a refresh of one of their most popular air coolers, the Hyper 212, called the Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition. This guy right here. It's got RGB, it's got a sleek new design, and a slightly different mounting system to the old Hyper 212. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor. And what do you do, guys? Subscribe! Woo! Yeah, you guys have been asking us to cover more air cooling solutions, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how to install Cooler Master's new Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition on an AM4 based motherboard. <laughs> Let's do it. Before we begin, I want to make this clear. This is for demonstration purposes only. Every single system and every motherboard and every setup is different. This guide is just to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition on an AM4 base system. I'm going to answer the inevitable questions that we're going to get in the comment section before we begin. So, yes, it has RGB. Yes, you can install it with more than one fan. Yes, it will work with AuraSync and every single motherboard that has an RGB header provided you have a four pin 12 volt RGB header. No, you don't need to use the included RGB controller. Yes, it will work with whatever CPU you're going to ask about in the comment section that fits on an AM4 socket. Yes, it also works with Intel CPUs as well, but yeah, we're not covering that in this video. Now that's out of the way, let's finally get started. We're going to take a look at what comes in the Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition box and show you the little bits and pieces that are required to install this on an AM4 based system. So that's a system running any of the Ryzen processors, both 1st gen Ryzen and 2nd gen Ryzen. Okay, let's take a look at what's in the box. These plastic brackets enable you to install an additional fan on the other side of the cooler. However, you'll need your own fan to do this. And a backing plate which enables you to install this on an AMD socketed motherboard or an Intel socketed motherboard. But yeah, we're only doing AMD in this guide. Let's pull out the cooler itself and have a look at this guy. It's completely redesigned from the ground up and it is absolutely gorgeous. The included fan is RGB and not addressable RGB. Let's take a look at all of the mounting hardware for every socket and pick out the parts that we're going to need for an AM4 based installation. The first thing we're going to need is four of these little guys here and four of these plastic clips. Next, we're going to need four of these bolts and one of these to tighten up the bolts. You'll also need to locate these two brackets. These straight brackets are for AM4 mounting only. What you'll need to do is get the bracket and put it on the inner lip of the cooler and you'll notice that it's got locating notches cut out and all you need to do is put the screw through the top and move it until it lines up at the hole and tighten it up. And once you've done that side, you want to rotate the cooler around and rinse and repeat and do the exact same thing on the other side of the cooler as well. Pretty straightforward stuff guys. If you look closely, the correct corners to put the pegs into are labelled AMD. You'll want to get the four pegs and slide them as far away as they go from each other, locate the plastic clips and slide them on. Now you might need to use a little bit of force here, it's not easy the first time you do this, and yeah, once you clip it in, you should be good to go. And just rinse and repeat that process on every corner, and just keep in mind that the pegs need to be as far away from each other as possible, otherwise it won't fit through the holes on the motherboard. I'm going to show you the easiest way to actually get the backing plate installed on your motherboard. What I usually do is lay the backing plate down and drop the motherboard on top, Get the four bolts that I showed earlier and just finger tighten them in. Don't do them in too hard just yet because I'm going to show you what you need to do to get them in properly tight. You'll need the included socket which has a Phillips head on the top and just tighten it up with your Phillips head screwdriver. You don't have to worry about over tightening these. These will stop at a certain point so you can't actually over tighten them at all. 
Once that's done, you'll want to remove the warning sticker from the bottom. I've seen lots and lots of people leave this on and they complain that their temperatures are really high, so make sure you remove that. Locate the small syringe of Master Gel Pro because we're going to put some on the IHS of the CPU to get this cooler all mounted up. What you want to do is use a P dot size of thermal compound. Now, lots of different people will say different amounts, but this is the amount that I have found to work properly. Drop the cooler onto the bolts we installed previously and just get them to kind of line up. And all you want to do is grab a long Phillips head screwdriver and tighten them on opposing corners. This might be a little bit tricky. You'll see it's kind of lifting up here. Don't worry about it, guys. All you need to do is just do the opposing corner and you should be good to go and just rinse and repeat that process until the bolts all stop. The best way to do this is just keep alternating each corner. Once you're done tightening everything up, put the fan back onto the front side of the heatsink and we're going to plug in the fan so everything works. Locate the fan connector plug and plug it into an available fan header on your motherboard. I'm plugging mine into the CPU fan header. It could be different on your motherboard, so make sure you check your motherboard's manual. I'm going to show you guys two different ways to connect up the RGB to get it to work on your system. The first method is just connecting it straight into a 4-pin 12-volt RGB header on your motherboard. On this motherboard, this is what it looks like. It could be different on your board. And the other way is actually using the included controller. This is a recommended way if you're using an older motherboard that doesn't actually have an RGB header. But I would recommend using your motherboard's RGB header. And that's it. You're all done, you're all good to go, and your system should be nice and cool. I think we covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Discord and drop a comment down below. But before you drop a comment down below, make sure you read the comment section because either myself or someone else would have answered those questions already. Please take that into account before wasting your own time writing a question down below. Don't worry guys, we're gonna do an Intel version of this as well. We'll probably do it sometime next week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. And Tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And yeah, guys, this thing is pretty cool. And I'm gonna do this to trigger you. Ready? Ready? Couldn't do that again. It's empty. Yeet! <laughs> I like when I do that at the start and people are like, oh, I'm doing the cooler in it. <laughs>